tragic Demons appear like magic Money long so elastic Foreign fabrics to fashion I'm itching for money cash I had it Shit get on my pockets like time When I get on my beat it's a rise Little niggas don't want static Wait, 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 wait Become like tsunami and drown you with the trip I swear to God, none of you guys better say anything about the hat that's on my head. Listen, until the Pistons get a nice snapback that has like some white and some red, not the nasty blue ones that I see everywhere, I'm just not going to wear any. So don't take it up with me. Take it up with the people who make the Pistons hats. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Pistons draft just took place last night, and boy, were the Pistons active and Tory Reavers first draft as the Pistons general manager. So just to make sure I'm not jumping all over the place, there's a lot of things that happened last night. So instead of me like jumping from this to that to this, then I'm just going to go in order of the things that took place last night for the Pistons. So, first off, the Pistons got Piston Twitter favorite Killian Hayes at the seventh overall pick. If you're involved in Pistons Twitter at all, I know you know the Pistons fans were going absolutely crazy once Killian's name was announced. I have no problems with this pick. Obviously, the Pistons need a point guard. I wanted them to get a point guard. Killian Hayes is that point guard. He's also from France. He's best friends with Seku. Hopefully, he helps Seku in that department as well. Hopefully, they can grow up together. I have no problems with this pick. Really nice pick by Troy Weaver. Now, this is where Troy Weaver started to get really active in the draft. He ended up trading for the 16th overall pick from the Houston Rockets took on Trevor Reese's contract and in return gave the Houston Rockets a heavily protected first round pick I believe for the next four years it's top 16 protected and then after those four years it turns into a top 10 protected pick and then after that then it's just second round picks after that so he's basically have it protected for the next six years in case the Pistons just aren't any good which hopefully within the next six years they are good at some point so really protected pick Trevor Reese's contract is for 12.8 million dollars this year but he isn't expiring so the Pistons very well could just flip him again and get some more assets as an expiring or he could end up getting waived I really don't see him being in a Pistons uniform but either way I think they could possibly flip him as an expiring or just wave him if they want to do that but outside of that I think this trade was really good for the Pistons got themselves another pick in the first round and obviously Troy Reaver saw a guy that he liked. That guy being Isaiah Stewart, center from Washington. So look, I'm not some big draft guy. I don't know much about these prospects coming into the draft, but what I do know is that the Pistons have desperately need a good backup center. They desperately needed to attack that at some point, somewhere. And if they do bring back Christian Wood, they have their backup center now in Isaiah Stewart. Or the Pistons could head into the season with Isaiah Stewart as their starting center. And with free agency now at what, about eight hours away now, they could go ahead and get a backup center there or get a veteran center to start and let Isaiah Stewart stay behind him until however long. But for me, I see why they made this pick. Isaiah Stewart, and along with Killian Hayes, by the way, both are high character guys. They're great in the interviewing process, which Troy Reaver let us know in his introductory press conference. That was huge on his list. He wants to draft high character guys, and apparently these two guys one of the highest character guys in the draft report. So it makes sense why they did this trade. Um, I'm supportive of it. Now, this is where we're going to start having some controversy. We had a lot of Pistons fans heartbroken last night when it was announced that Troy Weaver would be trading fan favorite Luke Kennard to the Los Angeles Clippers for the 19th overall pick in the draft. And before we go any further in the video, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you give me that thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. If you guys like my content, you guys hit that subscribe button down below now obviously I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the video if you guys want me to make a completely separate video just talking about the Pistons decision to trade Luke let me know in the comment section down below but you guys have followed my channel if you guys follow my work on Twitter at Detroit Bad Boys I made it known that I wasn't really a fan of trading Luke I thought we should keep him on the team however the Pistons vision Troy Weaver's vision has been made very clear and once I once I saw what his vision was I have no problems with this trade for Luke um, getting that 19th overall pick like I said once I saw what Troy Weaver's vision was I, I already knew that Luke was probably gone I, I knew it like right before they traded him once I saw they traded up to get that 16th pick I was like yeah I, I see what he's doing here and I'm not going to be shocked if Luke gets traded during this draft night and believe it or not a few picks later Luke was gone so I, I'm supportive of it I know a lot of people's hearts are broken over Luke Luke was a fan favorite he's a good player a really good player I wish him the best in LA but I understand the trade and I'm supportive of it as well oh god am I record am I recording okay yeah uh okay so like Apparently, the Pistons just made a trade in the middle of me recording this video. Um, the Pistons are trading Kyrie Thomas and Tony Snell to the Atlanta Hawks for Dwayne Dedman. So, I mean, that goes along with what I was saying earlier about, um, about Isaiah Stewart possibly getting a veteran big man for him to get behind or start over and have a veteran presence off the bench. So they just they just went and got their center, their veteran center. They traded Kyrie Thomas, who, you know, never really got shot, but, you know, never was really part of the future. And Tony Snell, who's an expiring contract. I wonder if they got... 
Did he get any picks for this? All right, so there's no picks involved, but James Edwards of The Athletic just tweeted that it's basically an identical swap of cap space. So basically they got rid of Kyrie Thomas, so they weren't going to use Tony Snow, who was clogging up space for the young guys, and just swapping cap space for the position that I told you guys they needed earlier in the video. They need a backup center or a veteran starting center while Stewart backed them up. So it makes sense. I like this trade a lot. Oh, you know what else this means? I'll, I'll save that for another video. Let me try to get back on topic here. That was just like, that, that was live reaction right there. So let me go ahead and get back on topic here. I'll talk about that in another video. So anyways, with this 19th pick that they got for trading Luke Kennard, the Pistons drafted Sadiq Bey, which I hope I said his name right, but it seems like that a lot of Pistons Twitter liked him. I saw that a lot of people had him going much higher and apparently he slid down to the Pistons. From the brief reading that I read about him as well, he is a 3 and D type of player. He's a wing, 6'8", with a 6'10 wingspan. I've been absolutely begging the Pistons to get a bigger wing because wings has just been so bad for the Pistons. I actually wrote about it earlier in the summer but yeah I've been begging for them to just get some type of like actual wing because I'm so sick of us being undersized at that position and not being able to defend anybody so once again another pick that I'm cool with and apparently this guy was supposed to go higher in the draft and the Pistons wanted to go get him when they saw he was slipping so I like that as well trying to get guys that you feel like are higher than they should be drafted and they're slipping to you you go get the guy you like so I'm cool with this one too. And finally, lastly in the draft, the Pistons traded for the 38th pick from the Utah Jazz. They took on Tony Bradley in return for some future considerations that I don't believe we know yet. But with this pick, the Pistons picked Saban Lee. Now, this pick I'm actually really excited about because reportedly the Pistons had him as a first round talent and when they saw he was slipping, they wanted to go get him. Which, like I said earlier in the video, if you see a guy slipping that you really like, you go and get him. I have no problem with that at all. Now, I listened to Jay Billis talk about him when the Pistons drafted him and I also watched some highlights of him afterwards. But apparently this guy is a score first point guard. He can really score the ball. He can get to the free throw line, make his free throws, which is really good by the way as well for a guard and someone who wants to consider themselves a scorer you have to get to the free throw line you have to be able to shoot free throws which this guy does and apparently he's uber as like too at getting to the rim and can finish over you so i'm actually really excited about this guy this guy was a first round talent for the pistons they went and got him and apparently he's a really good scorer and that's something the pistons i don't think have had i mean outside of Derrick Rose last year in a long time someone you can just give the ball and you can go get a bucket so i'm really excited to see how he plans out and with this video getting close to like seven and a half minutes i want to try to cut it short so my biggest takeaway from this draft from the Pistons and Troy Weaver is that Troy Weaver is ready to reshape this roster and he's going to do it with young guys with an influx of new young players which I can get on board with. I can see his vision. They're not going to go out and just purposely get trash players and purposely tank. No, they're going to get young players, influx of young players, develop them, and try to be a fun, exciting team to at least watch as they develop. And maybe maybe they will lose a lot of games, but at least they're going to be exciting to watch and develop these young players and try to get a star and try to get quality players from the draft, which I am completely supportive of. Like I said, with this video going a little bit longer than I wanted to, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short right here. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below as well. We're on the road to a 1,000 subscribers. So if you enjoy my content, please hit the subscribe button down below. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys thought about the Pistons draft. And let me know if you guys want to see me make a video about specifically just a loot trade or anything specifically from the draft night moving forward. Let me know in the comment section down below. And until my next video, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe, everybody.